What is it? I'm on holiday. I was asleep. Why? Look, I was literally asleep like this with my pillow up like that. That's how I sleep. I'm in my dressing gown because that's how I sleep. Welcome to another Richard Jones Let's Square Theatre podcast with my guest Katie Wicks. Uh, we're doing more of these starting on um, February the 5th at the Leicester Square Theatre Series 13, motherfuckers! Uh, going right through to April the 2nd. Please go to leicestersquaretheatre.com and buy some tickets to these if you would like to help us out. Uh, and also have a great night out. The February the 5th, we've got Adam Kay, who's written the best-selling book, and This Is Going To Hurt. He's also a fantastic comedian, singer, everything. Uh, and uh, also on that day, hopefully, uh, a big comedy and serious actor, who I think you all want to see. Uh, February the 12th, we've got John Robbins and Alice James. That's very nearly sold out. Uh, February the 19th, we've got Trevor and Simon. And also another very exciting possibility for that one. Uh, and lots of people uh, want to do this. I'm just trying to nail this, them down. If you go to richtang.com slash gigs or Les Square Theatre website, you can see who's been confirmed. Uh, and also a Les Square Theatre website, buy tickets to see the show. Also, come and see me on tour. It starts on February in uh, February the 1st in Northampton, goes right through to Warwick Arts Centre in June. richardherring.com slash gigs or richardherring.com slash ofrig slash tour. And you can get all the details of that. I would love to see you uh, coming along to those shows, obviously. A few of them are selling pretty well. A few of them are selling pretty badly. It's the usual story, my friends. Uh, I'll keep you up to date with where I'm coming week by week. Um... And, uh, yeah, thanks. Let's sit back and enjoy Richard Herring's This is Square Theatre Podcast. That's my hair. That's how it looks. I just, I've literally just been asleep. Ah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who currently has a drifter in his anal passage <laughs> and is trying to generate electricity. It's Richard Herring! <laughs> that reference to weeks ago. Is, this is... For that Richard Osman episode was about three weeks ago. Why am I talking about that? All of a sudden, it's very confusing the order these are going to go out in. Uh, so, uh, hello, welcome to another episode of Rich Chang's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. I was talking to a guy um, down in the hospital. He had um, an eel uh, in his... It was a living eel, but it was inside his anal passage. He calls it Rahela I don't know if that's going to catch on. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, we'll just have a quick chat with the audience before we, cr- we crack on. Uh, I've got a cab in one hour, 20 minutes, so I've got to wrap up. About one hour, ten minutes. That's what we're aiming for, so I don't want to waste too much time. Uh, there's a, a handsome young gentleman here in the front row. Don't laugh. Said, That's ridiculous. What's, what's your name? Roy. Roy. That's good. And what do you do for a living, Roy? Uh, I'm, I'm an insect scientist. You're an insect scientist. <laughs> now. <laughs> do you do science on insects, or are you an insect that has evolved? <laughs> and it's both of those things. What is... <laughs> Oh my god, this is what I, this is all, as a comedian, this is all you want, okay? This is, you just want the person you pick on the front row to have a ridiculous job, and then the rest of it is easy. What is the, what is your, are you, do you work in the insect scientist business, or are you, are you, are you with each other? I'm you're retired. You're a retired insect scientist. Have you ever, um, created a pod that, so you can transport and, and change it partly into an insect. Have you ever done that? That's what I imagine your main... That's the, that's the holy grail of insect scientists, isn't it? Is that you will invent the pods and you become the, your favourite insect. It didn't work. Look, for me, it looks like a semi-successful for you. Um, what's, your, what's the best insect you've ever done an experiment on? Um, yes, yeah, you've got to think about it because that's a difficult question. A wasp! Yeah, I mean, technically that is an insect. I mean, it just is. Uh, so, six legs, right? Yeah. Bang. <laughs> is there any more to it than that? Just know it, it. Yeah, that's an insect. Yeah. Sit, yeah, that's an insect. Arachnid, mate. Is that ba- that's mainly what it involves. What did, what did you do? What evil experiment did you do on... I mean, imagine most insect-based... I, I tried to get a, a spider wasp to, to lay 
eggs in another into a spider in a tank. Right, you tried to get a spider wasp to lay eggs into a spider in a tank. Yeah. You are weird and evil. So <laughs> I'm guessing a spider wasp lays its eggs in spiders. Yeah. That's what I'm guessing from the, just from what you've said. Um, that doesn't sound like... That just sounds like a bit of fun at the Christmas party. That doesn't sound like an experiment. That's like it does that. Go and look at that in a, spider, a spider's nest in the wild. Don't do that in a laboratory. What did you discover? Oh, it was in the wild. Whereabouts were you? Where does the spider wasp... Uh... It, was it was in South America. What a life he leads, David. Where's, where's nuclear physics taken you? Where's the most... Switzerland. Rubbish, mate. He's been in South America. It's with spider wasps. Uh, what did you learn from your evil experiment? They don't like being in, in uh, cages. They don't like being in cages. Sp I, bet, I bet you learnt spiders don't like having eggs laid inside them. Are the spiders alive when they have their eggs laid inside them? And then do they hatch and eat the spider and kill it? God. I mean, the insects fucking deserve it, don't they? They're, that's, they're evil. They deserve your evil exp experiment. Are you, are you trying to... Can you harvest... I'm going, to talk, I'm going to talk to him for an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> this is the, I'm genuinely interested in it. Um, are you trying to extract insect technology to, in, to put it into humans so we'll become better soldiers That's in a future war? Department. That's not your department. There are, there are guys doing that. That's what, If I was doing your job, that's definitely what I'd be doing. I'd be trying to make people who could shoot webs out of their fingers and stuff, but in an evil way, not like Spider-Man. Uh, with, uh, with great insects comes great responsibility. So, uh, lovely to meet you, uh, Roy. I remembered your name. That's how impressed I am with you. So, uh, it's... Our guest this week could not possibly beat that, and that is, that is whoever they were, they could not beat an insect scientist. They're backstage going, fuck, I wish I done an experiment on this. I'm going to ask her what experiment she's done on insects. I used to uh, get ants to get on a piece of newspaper and then set fire to it. Same thing, innit? <laughs> I was 28 years old when I did that, mate. <laughs> Thank you. My guest this week is more interesting than you, mate. You'll never be up here. Never. <laughs> what, 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 what are you doing next week? Uh, <laughs> She is probably best known from her, her appearance on Dick and Dom's Funny Business, and there is no business that is funnier <laughs> than Dick and Dom's Funny Business. It's Katie Wiggs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the show. It's a good firm handshake. Yeah, it's very... Tell us a bit about Dick and Dom's funny business. Do you remember being on that show? Don't get them mixed up or fucking hell. I go mad. Um, actually, it was quite, I do remember. It's quite funny. We, I was in a sketch which was Dragon's Den, but animals. Mm. <laughs> that made you really spit your water out. Uh, it's a funny concept, isn't it? It is. So what animals were doing... It was written by, do you remember Ed Weeks? Yes. Uh, of he's he's in that show now, isn't he? About? He's like incredibly famous in America, isn't he's, that? Yeah, so. gone across the pond. Um, he he wrote it, and it, it was quite funny actually. It was it was uh, yeah, the dragons were, we were dressed in big animal costumes, and people were coming on pitching inventions that animals would want. It's quite a sweet idea. Yeah, not ashamed of it certainly. No, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bit like what he does. He's an in, he, he's an oh. insect scientist. That guy there. I'm mainly going to talk to him throughout the show. <laughs> Uh, you did, I read an interview with you where you were auditioned oh, for yeah. a Dragon's Den sketch oh, yeah. without realising that it was a yeah, Dragon's Den that's sketch. that's a good story. Yeah, um, yeah it was... Uh, it, they, sometimes they do, they do a... Do you want me to help you? Yeah. Getting on a bit I'm quite on. an old man now. Getting oh, on. Oh, you smashed that, my book. That was done before. You smashed my book in half. Um, sometimes when you have an audition, they suddenly spring something on you and say, actually, can you just read this? And you haven't seen it before. So it was for a sketch show, and they said, oh, um, can you just sort of do this? And they handed me a, a sketch, and it said, Dragon 1, Dragon 2. And I sort of said, yeah, OK, fine. I was quite young and keen, not like now. And uh, I, so I saw Dragon 1. I was like, OK, yeah, I'll do Dragon 1. So I started doing this Welsh accent, because I thought, you know, that's how a dragon naturally would sound. And <laughs> fire breathing and stuff. And then, as, and then I slowly realised it was a sketch about Dragon's death. <laughs> so, dra so I slowly morphed it into an impression of Deborah Meaden, which is weirdly not that difficult to do from a Welsh <laughs> dragon. I don't know how, but I, I got the job. Yeah, I got away with it. God, and the then the, the same thing really happened again, because then they gave me another sketch, which was Spook 1, and that was about the show Spooks. Yeah. And I was about 
to be a ghost. <laughs> so that, that story could have turned out a lot worse. I can tell you that. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for um, bringing that up. That's a nice <laughs> it's good. story to tell. Um, You've done. Lo- I mean, I first uh, saw you in Edinburgh when you were doing a double act uh, with yeah. Anna Crilly. Yeah. Are you still working together? She's or... dead. Has she died? That's sad. <laughs> so, um, no, not really. Well, she moved out of London. She's had children. Yes. I still don't have any. So our lives went like this a bit. Um, no, not so much. Uh, how, how did you start working together? Well, y- you, you used to with Avalon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how do we start? With? She was already uh, doing stand up in London. She's a brilliant stand up. And I, we met, and I was doing stand up too, and I was pretty awful. And we, we did a, the Funny Women competition, it was, it was called. You remember yes, that? Which would make sense. And uh, we were both in the final together. And I remember that we were, I think I was the only one laughing at her and vice versa. <laughs> it was like a date that had gone really well. We were sort of, her act was quite surreal. And um, she did the whole thing about growing up without feet or something. And yeah, I just remember we kind of went, oh, okay. Yeah, I see, we get each other. And that was that. But I still lived in Wales. And I remember that she, she had to call my parents' landline and say, is Katie there? And I was upstairs asleep. <laughs> my mum said, this is, there's a comedian on the phone for you. And I was about 23 or something. And I was like, yeah. And she said, do you want to do some sketches? I said, yeah, all right. So I used to go up to London on the train and write with her in the pub and then stay in a bed that she that was Dermot O'Leary's bed that she'd won in a competition. Dermot O'Leary's yeah, bed? Yeah, just the bed, not she'd him. She'd won a co- in a competition? And, yeah, what com- competition you know, a competition was this? Yeah. Uh, it was one of those Saturday morning... Uh, well, like, life's competition. <laughs> Did Dermot O'Leary know about the competition? Or oh, was I it think just, it was his idea. Yeah, it was his idea, was <laughs> Win his bed. We're gonna his, we'll steal it for you. It was his want. He'll yeah. come back. Did, it have, so, did he change his sheets? Was it still his sheets? <laughs> they were really excited about that. I wasn't yeah. bothered. He's not okay. my cup of tea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you did uh, some Edinburgh shows together. I mean, you're very yeah. you're very successful very quickly. Both of you, and you, yeah. you got you sort of that led on to. Well, I think our first ever Edinburgh was our best, our most successful. And we sort of took it for granted. We didn't realise that it was, if that's not a bold claim, that it, you know, that it doesn't usually go that well when you first go up. You don't usually get five-star reviews. And then it went downhill from then on. <laughs> the difficult second album and all that. But, um, yeah, we, we were together for like 10 years. Right, yeah. So it is quite weird to be doing stuff. We do more stuff on our own now, and it does feel yeah, yeah. lonely sometimes. It does oh. feel odd. You must know what I'm talking I about. I know. I know what you're talking it's about. It's a funny relationship, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Like a marriage. Yeah. But I'll, often I find female double acts kind of get on with each other forever. And That's because women male, are raised yeah. to not be confrontational. Yeah, and male double acts. Yeah. I mean, I find, I find it weird when male double acts like each other still, you know. Yeah. Vic and That's Bob odd. never argue, do no. they? I don't think so. I don't think so. There are a few people. Like, uh, Ant and Dex seem to like each other. Dick and Dom are Dick and uh, Dom. complex. Are they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've done very well, know. Dick and Dom, I think, for, you know... Kids. I given, wonder if they're what, bitter, what, though, about how it's Well, it's gone. a weird thing, isn't it? Like, Trevor and Simon were the kind of Dick and oh, Dom of the previous were generation great. who were amazing. I've worked with them. They and were, they they seemed, were very nice. like They seemed to have held it together because they were yes. really properly successful. And, yeah. You know, and then it's difficult to make they that transition. They were really, um, like, inspiring. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. But they're still working, uh, Trevor and Simon. I must get them on here. I love, I love Trevor and Simon. Oh, Do you, you like must. Trevor and Simon? Would you come and see Trevor and Simon? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would. They, 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 we'll have them on. Uh, so, uh, if, you know, if they want to. <laughs> not going to force them. We're going to give away their beds <laughs> as a competition. Their one bed. They probably have one bed. That's what all It'd double acts have. It's funny if they said no, bed. they didn't want to do it. <laughs> they don't want to do it. Uh, do no, they seem very nice. I, I was, uh, I'd quite like to get the Wurzels on. Are they, are the they Wurzels the congratulated Hang me on, on the birth the of wor- my is, son is on, that, on Twitter. Um, was the Wurzels <laughs> nothing to do with Wurzel Gummidge? No, they're nothing to do with Wurzel Gummidge. Don't what be ridiculous. What were they again? The Wurzels are very famous. They're probably Somerset's most famous band. I don't remember of them. doing yokel songs. What year are we talking? Well, they've been going for 50, 60 okay. years. They were, Adge Cutler was the original um, lead singer of the Wurzels, and okay. he, uh, he died in a car crash in about 1968. It's, it's a bit luck. like the story of The Doors. I nearly yeah. died in a car crash. Yeah, I was, I was okay. you know I that? I, my producer Ben I, mentioned it and said I should really? ask you backstage whether you're happy to talk about it. But you I know, brought no, it up I yourself, was lucky to, to be okay. I should wake up with a sort of 
you know, renewed optimism every day, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite a serious car car. Yeah, it was. It was like, should I seem, I mean, it's very sincere when I tell it. That's good. It. It's not the vibe. Um, <laughs> this is a well, very no, it sincere was, show. <laughs> um, yeah, it was about nine years ago. It was quite serious. My dad was driving. I broke the safety belt, broke all the bones in its, it, in its, that it came into contact with. Right, that doesn't sound good. No. That doesn't but sound it like he's doing it's his job. My life, I suppose. I well, no, that is doing its job, isn't it? The airbag went off too late, I remember that. So that's, that was, you know, get a refund on that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I mean, it wasn't nice. Um, I, yeah, so I broke, I mean, there's, you know, it's too grim if I go into it in detail. Okay. But you were, so you were badly hurt, but you were, doing, were you going to do Edinburgh that year? Was it just before Edinburgh or something like that? Was yeah, but then also, <clears throat> I was on such heavy painkillers, which are quite addictive, so that brings its own problems. And then our first ever Edinburgh, I think I was just coming off the codeine. Right. I was, like, slowly reducing it. And uh, so it was quite a trippy show anyway, and then add to the mix, like, a slightly drugged experience. I think that's why it was our best year in a way. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was less self-conscious. Wow. Which is the idea, that's what drugs do. Yeah. Well, you're that's very, that, you were, so you were young, early 20s. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And does that, does it change your outlook on, on the world? Well, or? I can't drive, right. and uh, I couldn't before, but I probably, I, I just feel like a car is like a big weapon now. Yes. <laughs> so I see a well, car. it is. Well, uh, a practical weapon, handy weapon. Yeah. Um, but my dad didn't drive afterwards, because he felt like he didn't sort of trust himself. And the guilt as well of injuring your own child, that was yeah. horrible for him. Um, I yeah, don't well, think I think I'll about learn. that all the time. Every time I'm in a car Every with my family, hurt. it's just yeah. terrifying. You just sort of think, it's, you know, it's, we it's can all go together. It's the responsibility I don't think I can bear yeah. about driving. I don't know if... Maybe if I have kids, I'll have to learn. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a go. We'll get Ubers everywhere. Yeah. No, that's not, <laughs> we're not supposed to. It's not ethical. No. Oh. But it happens. Yeah. <laughs> it does happen. Um, well, we'll talk about uh, some comedy now. Oh, yeah. It's too, it was too early to get into the serious bit. We'll come back to the... I'll, I'll, once I've relaxed you well, with some comedy... The structure we'll of come life back and we'll talk about, we'll about uh, near-death yeah. experiences. That's exciting. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, the moment you're in a show called The Windsors where you play oh, yeah. uh, Princess Fergiana from uh, the royal family. Is that what she's called? No. <laughs> that's what I call her. Why did you say it? Because that's what you call that's her. That's what I call her, Princess why, Fergiana. Why? Because it's better than Fergie. Okay. Do you play Fergie, Sarah Ferguson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't know if there'll be any more, but two series oh, really? have been out. We're just waiting to hear. Yeah, that was an amazing job. Um, and Harry Enfield's in it. Yeah, and dear old Harry. He's got quite. An He's very cast. sort of avuncular Is with he? everyone. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met um, Harry. I don't think. Really? No, I don't think so. That seems odd. Yeah. Um, it's like he's trying to avoid me. <laughs> or, am I, or am I trying to avoid him? Oh, no, it is you he doesn't... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, it is you he doesn't like. Um, yeah, that was a great job. I mean, she's a lot older than me, but I did, I did it in a read-through, and then they said, oh, just do it anyway. It's not a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so is it quite... Just do what, it anyway. What's the vibe of The Windsors? What, how would you describe Have it? Have not it's, seen it's, it? I haven't seen it. It's, it's a bit... It's kind of in the same uh, vein of, as Spitting Image. It's this big, heightened, you know, satirical, everyone's kind of grotesque. It's really funny. It's a really sort of smart script, really... Um, it's written by these two guys, Bert and George. It, it does a really clever thing of having quite broad appeal, kind of in a soapy way about this ridiculous family. Um, but also really, yeah, like informed, good satire. Yeah, it's, cool. it's funny. And do you, do, do you, res cool. did you research <laughs> Princess Fergie for that? Album? Oh, I, I went down a real um, rabbit hole of YouTube video. I watched all her Oprah uh, interviews. She, I ended up feeling so sorry for her because... She really, like, like emotionally will, like, slit her wrists in every interview. She's, she won't hold back. She's just desperate to be, like, seen and heard. There's something really sad about that. But she's also had a really um, dramatic life, and those has happened to her. Yeah. So I ended up feeling kind of bit, a bit bad. I always felt that she was a big, she was the big um, target of jokes, certainly like when I was in the 80s and 90s when yeah. I was starting to write topical stuff and it was all, I always felt, Did you I always, write jokes well, about I, her? well, I didn't because I always felt like it was, there was always just the same joke about it, it was all about yeah. her. That, there was just a running joke about having a fat ass, I think, wasn't there? Yeah, the, the, and it just so. sort of, even then I just felt 
that just seems so. And about so, her freckles. And yeah, her it just seems so weak. Weird dress sense. It was um, too obvious yeah, for you. I was, understand. But uh, you know, she wrote. She wrote. Yeah, I'm very. I was very sophisticated. I'm not interested in the jokes you about asses. It's the, it does yeah. not the only like the eight jokes about that. anuses. <laughs> And she, her anus is of a normal size, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. The actual. Um, <laughs> she wrote Budgie the Helicopter, didn't she? Did she, yeah, do that? she did yeah. you reference that in the. I don't the think show? so. I don't think so. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did. And the, 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 the daughters are, are characters in it as well. Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they seem crazy, don't they? Really bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. I didn't research them. No. I just. <laughs> It's a weird thing, the royal family. It's uh, in uh, we talk about Prince Andrew a lot in this uh, podcast, and then really? then have to uh, edit it all out. Yeah. Uh, but he was, of course, married to Princess Fergie. Yeah, I got well. into I get into trouble actually because I'm definitely not a royalist, and sometimes in the the press stuff you have to do, yeah. people ask you, you know, and what's your opinion about the royal family, and I have to say, oh, don't ask me that. Because I'll get into trouble. <laughs> so that's how I answer. Yeah. Which is really obvious in the way I'm saying, don't ask me that. I think the problem with the royal family, the Queen at the moment, she seems to have like two massive parties every year, not just because for her birthdays, but there's always like an... An- there's too many anniversaries. Of something. Like she's just yeah. about to... Last she's year, about a month and a half ago, something. she was doing her 70th wedding anniversary. <laughs> She's, and then she was like 90 and then she was like 50, 60 years on. Th- it's just like every six months. Oh, we'll get Brian May on the roof of Buckingham Palace again. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> One party a year, maximum. Yeah, it's like real attention seeking, yeah, isn't it's rubbing, it? Yeah. Well done. Yeah, it's like, oh, I've remembered something. Oh, well done. <laughs> Do you think they'll get to 80 years married, uh, Elizabeth and Prince Philip? Prince Philip just seems to <laughs> hang on like... No, he's, he's unkillable. Yeah. He was very ill at the same time as Nelson Mandela was very ill. <laughs> right. And I did a joke about who would go first and would prove whether God was racist or not. <laughs> and uh, it turns out God's racist. It doesn't surprise so, me. But it's amazing, you know, Nelson Mandela died a long time ago. God doesn't make any sense in his he decisions. He's a, he's a buffoon in many ways. So you were he's born an in... absolute tyrant. No, no offence to anyone who no believes there's to, a massive, perfect person in the sky who's created loads of imperfect people to judge by his own standards for some reason. <laughs> Seems like a weird thing to do to me when he didn't have to do anything, could have just sat back and enjoyed himself. So I'd herself. make you judge you. Yeah, or herself. Probably sexless, um, if there's just one I of you. I hope him. so. You were born and grew up in Pontypridd. That's my... Sort of. Well, where, where were you born? Well, I was, I was born in Pontypridd so. Hospital, but I, I grew up in Cardiff. Okay. It's important to... No, I was going to ask you about who was the most famous person in from Ponty. Ponty. I think um, Tom Jones is from Ponty. Yeah. My dad went to school with him roughly at the same time, okay. a couple of years ago. Um, that's all I know about Ponty. Yeah. River Taff goes through there. Mm. Yeah. Correct. A lot, of bridge, lot of bridges in Ponty. Yeah, shitloads of bridges. That's where he got yeah. his name. He was, uh, used to have a lot of uh, wooden bridges over the Taff. Is that why? I yeah. didn't, I didn't yeah. know. Okay. Thank you. Should, should learn about where you were born. That's why. That's why I have to do. Have to learn about it all. You've been in Celebrity Squares. Oh God! Yeah, it was Tell awful. me all oh, about it was Celebrity absolutely Squares. Absolutely dismal. Um, it was awful because something. Re- I think something really tragic had just happened in my life, and then rather than cancel, I did it, and I nearly <laughs> cried. It was awful, as Gino De Campo was talking. Yeah. I thought, oh my god, I, I need to cry, but I can't. I've been it's in horrible. his house. Ha- I've been in his house. Oh yeah, yeah. maybe I've heard this story. <laughs> Were you going to buy his house? I was like, well, I looked round. I was never going to buy it. It was Did awful. Did you mention the crying girl <laughs> in the the square below him? Did you mention what? Yeah, the crying girl. He didn't in the mention square that. Below no. him. He had a lot he's of a real idiot, weirdly. He? He had, he's been on through the keyhole with Keith Lemon, and he he's had gone like the he had like his through the keyhole key. He looked like he'd been through there. a keyhole. Yeah, <laughs> he did. And I always felt like I was doing through the keyhole, but I, I didn't know, I didn't know who it was. I was always really good at guessing. Were you? Yeah. yeah I was when, weirdly good at it. When uh, Lloyd Grossman did it. Yeah, we're talking, I don't know, when I was a teenager, 90s. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Was it was on at lunch sort of in the afternoon, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 David Frost uh, used to present it. Yeah, which is and then weird, they gave it to think, and then they gave That's it a real fall from grace, isn't it? For him. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think? They're not going to make a film about through the keyhole. <laughs> Yeah, Frost, Frost Grossman. Grossman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I could really see it though, head to head. Beautiful. Get Michael Sheen to play with both of them. Grossman's mainly gone over to the, uh, the pasta sauce. Yeah, he's now. gone quiet, isn't he? It's mainly there's a lot of. Uh, he must be quite old now. What's your favourite um, celebrity-based food product that you can buy at a supermarket? Um, the first thing I think of is old um, Newman. There he's is, quite yeah. cool, isn't he? Yeah. Have you tried Barry Norman's pickled onions? Is that real? It is. You real. think he would do popcorn? You would, but you know Barry Norman. He always took a sweat. My one regret in life is that I didn't try Barry Norman's pickled onions until after he died. You, you've got more to and regret. And that is my than only that. regret because I would. They're nice, that. and I would like to have told. I'd like to have been able no, to tell him in person. You must regret loads. So don't I love you. pickled onions, and uh, his pickled onions are well worth a, a crack if you. Uh, they sell them in supermarkets. You don't believe me? It's true, and they've got like a little. Thing on the top saying Barry Norman. There's a little story of how Barry Norman <laughs> came up with it. I think it's still written in the present tense, which I find offensive. <laughs> I don't know if he just made a big supply of them before he died and they're still selling them off. I hope so, because if they're not, if someone else is making them, I'll be very cross. They should be all Barry Norman's it mates. Be written pickled in onions. the past tense on the packaging. <laughs> right. But pickled onions can last a long time, so he could have made them all. That's the whole point of pickled onions. I mean, I think onions yeah. can last quite a long time, to be honest. I've never had I don't know if you need onion. to pickle them. I, that show, is it called I've Never Seen Star Wars? The witch, oh, yes, I've never seen Star Wars, yeah. I would be such an ideal candidate. There's so many things I haven't done. You've never tried Barry Normal's pickled onions? No. Have you tried um, Lloyd Grossman's Arabiata sauce? I don't think so. No, could do that. Have yeah, you tried. I, I could do that. Um, we could do a new one. You could host it where yeah. I just try pasta. <laughs> Sources. It would be quite a short. I mean, you could do all the Lloyd Grossman if different If it was ones. just an audio thing, it would just be the sort of sloppy noises. Yeah. That would definitely sources. give it a go. That will work. <laughs> was Warwick Davis doing Celebrity <laughs> Squares when you did it? Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Uh, I didn't interact with him much. I was, I was too, um, you know, in my, in my it was, sorrow. It was a weird series was, in that they tried to get... Day. It was like a sort of throwback to Celebrity Squares, but they got quite a lot of current... And quite cool people. I think like Sarah Pascoe was yeah, in it and, and Bridget um, Christie was Joe in Joe Wilkinson it? was a regular. Yeah. yeah. Who's amazing. Yeah. Has he done... Uh, no, he hasn't done this it. yet. <laughs> he hasn't, he <laughs> hasn't <laughs> done it. Let's <laughs> um, no, I'm just checking oh, wow. you're still there. They're so dedicated to they it. Are. It's brilliant. It's uh, scary. They're like... It's scary. It's scary. It's Unlike scary. some of the <laughs> nuclear physicists. I mean, the nuclear <laughs> physicists sitting next to the insect scientists. Imagine well, if those two guys get together. I do remember, you said you were going to ask me about insects. Yes, I was. I, I do remember, this is so sick, popping a tadpole because I thought it was like a pod. Well, I, I'm so going to have to stop you. <laughs> Just go over to the insect scientist. Is a tadpole an insect? <laughs> no. Oh. Amphibian. It's nice to have an insect expert there because, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have felt comfortable saying I'm going to have to no, stop you, Katie. Right. That is not an insect. You're that right. is an amphibian. It's a uh, fe it's a fetal amphibian. It is an amphibian. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you know? How do you know about that? <laughs> Stick to your own subject, mate. That's what I'm saying. I know about amphibians. On Airbnb, you popped a tadpole. It's a, it's a joke. Someone's posted an insect hotel. Right. It's not a very funny joke, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but they've gone to the trouble of posting it. Yeah. Well, I saw something like that when I was looking for a when I was looking for houses. For there, was a, there was a house that was a load of insect. There was loads of insects. Was it was called Dame something? Catherine's Insect Hotel? I don't think it was. I think there's called. obviously people going around making up <laughs> lodgings like, for insects. Oh, 18 rooms, very cozy, and then a picture of all the insects in a sort of. It was on for 18 million pounds. I think this this insect that sounds thing. quite reasonable. Which given... was the kind of age, this kind of range I was looking in. That's why. That's why I came across it. It's very stained, this chair. Do you know thank that? Thank you. Yeah, we're getting new chairs for the next yeah, series. So thank you. Oh, good. That's uh, one, of the, one of the things from the Kickstarter. New chairs. George, the sound guy, he hates these chairs. Oh, I, OK. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, what were we talking about? Oh... Because it reminds him of listening to his mum and dad having sex. <laughs> and let's... <laughs> takes him back. Guys. When Why he was 28 years that? old, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you popped a tadpole. Was it a Welsh tadpole? It must have been. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> One less, <laughs> as far as you're concerned, on the planet. We, we all did cruel things to 
to animals. That's as bad as it got, I think. Yeah. Didn't get to serial killer territory. No. It is the starting point of many serial killers. That's absolutely. Yeah. That's why I mentioned it. Popping a tadpole. Charles Manson. He popped a tadpole. Yesterday. He must have popped tadpoles. <laughs> to be fair, Charles... I didn't know he wrote folk songs. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's a, he's a, he's I didn't a, know that. Yeah. I never knew that. Very talented man. Yeah, I never <laughs> knew that. In a way, I it's a shame he, a he went, down the, went down the having a cult who yeah, murdered people and putting a swastika on his head root. In a way... It was a bold job, decision, wasn't know. it? It's a bold decision when people have a tattoo of anything on their face, but a swastika right in that's yeah, making a statement. It's sort of like the tattoo you'd have in a sketch. It doesn't seem to be real life <laughs> tattoo, does it? Do you know what I mean? No. It's so extreme, you sort of couldn't believe. Yeah, it's probably not as bad as the other stuff he did. So it's... Um, <laughs> yeah. You didn't do you've got other people to do it. That's, why, that's where it's, this is all leading. For me, you lot. <laughs> Getting you all... All on side, then just bit by bit, we'll grab... If we start with just shouting acronyms out, <laughs> then it'll lead on. It's like that film, The Wave. I haven't seen The Wave. Oh, well. You, d- you haven't got the reference. Is there, a, is there a film in which a man does is a that, podcast and then makes people... Film? The Wave? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Good. I think anyone who's seen The Wave knows what you mean. Yeah. And the rest of us feel quite alienated and upset yeah. that we're not in on... Which I like. I like it's to do that. It's a pretty highbrow film. It is. Uh, yeah. I tell you what I really liked in Edinburgh that I saw you in, which went on to be a radio show, was oh, The yeah. Party, or mm. Party, mm. Uh, which was written by Tom Second Basden. one, yeah. Yeah. No, that was, yeah, I got a lot out of that. It was great. Um, it was a play about a, a group of sort of young, but quite stupid sort of idealistic people who'd set up their own political party. And I think Tom Basson, the, the writer, said it was roughly based on uh, how, like, Cambridge Footlights meetings, right. how they used to go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, it, yeah, it was such brilliant writing, and uh, I suppose it was sort of taking the piss out of, yeah, these people who were so well-meaning but didn't realise that it, their own sort of egos and was so caught up, and taking it so seriously. Um, yeah, and then it, it, and then it was a, a radio series, about four or five, and then we did a TV pilot, which was brilliant, but didn't go anywhere, as is the case yes. so often. Tell me about it. Yeah, I am. I <laughs> I'm wish, trying to. I wish I'd get as far as a TV <laughs> pilot, to be honest. Yeah, you're right. I should be very... I'm very blessed. <laughs> <laughs> well, do check that out. If you, I'm sure you yeah, can no, find that I online. Think it's... We might be doing more. Yeah, oh, really? Great. Tim Key is in it and Johnny yeah. Sweet. In fact, when the year we were performing it in Edinburgh was the year that Tim and Johnny won main comer... Um, Main comers, <laughs> which in Edinburgh is quite a feat. Yeah, we've all met the main comer in the courtyard. Um, the, the main award and, and newcomer, that was, it wasn't even a good story. <laughs> it was still worth it, it was still worth it. Especially and uh, my, my fans will be very, I mean, they'll know, but they'll be very excited to know you're on Torchwood, the, oh, yeah. the Doctor Who based spin off. Yeah. I've been in Doctor Who, the audio version. <laughs> what did you play in Torchwood? It's a Welsh-based thing, so there you were bang straight in. Yeah. Um, well, I, I've never watched it. Um, <laughs> I've never seen it. Uh, I played someone's sister. Yeah. <laughs> and then they later died. It was a long time ago. I can't really remember. Was it Doctor Who's um, sister? No. Okay. It was, was a character... It, um, the bloke off of uh, children's TV's sister. I don't know what you I didn't, you, really, what I you didn't mean. really watch Torchwood. Dick and Dom? Was it Dick and Dom's um, sister? It was a, a character called Yanto. Oh, I was Yanto. his sister. Yeah, anyone remember Torchwood? Yeah. One as good as Doctor Who, was it? They went under, under the Cardiff thing. They was, lived underneath the Millennium Dome or something. They... I don't know. It's amazing. <laughs> so, um... And you've been in Sherlock, which I, I auditioned for Sherlock and I didn't oh, get the... I don't the like part? to talk about it. Was uh, I was... I've forgotten the name. It was, like, it was Agitated Man or something. Like, annoyed Man. Was that your had, name? Yeah, yeah. Agi- yeah. Agitated. I can't believe I had to audition. I was saying to Richard Osman about a month ago. Uh, is, <laughs> um, oh, it was nothing. Saw. It was nothing on there. But you had a proper part in it. Yeah, I, I did. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was good fun. Yeah. I've been in a toilet with Benedict Cumberbatch. Me too. Yeah. I've been in a toilet with Benedict Cumberbatch in Buckingham and Palace. 
Oh, is this the game? So yeah. you have to remember. Okay. Yeah. I've been in a toilet with Benedict Cumberbatch in Buckingham Palace, and I, <laughs> and I bought a lemon. Like the show. Yeah. Is that how it works? That's could be a shopping it works. game. When okay, were you in a go. toilet with Benedict Cumberbatch? During Sherlock. Are oh, we? An actual toilet? Yeah. No, it was. Uh, it, there was a moment. There was a read through. And now I was about to say bisexual toilets, but I mean unisex. Yeah. And I, we both went into these bisexual toilets, and I, I heard someone weeing, and then I saw his shoes, and I remembered his shoes from the read through because they were quite distinctive. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, oh, I might WhatsApp someone and say I can hear him weeing, but I didn't. Yeah. But I've yeah. heard one of Eternal having a wee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they didn't know I was listening, but I was listening. <laughs> Can you remember which one? Oh, well, I don't know like? which one it was. I was when I presented the middle one, of the, one. One of the two occasions I presented Top of the Pops. Yeah, that's right. Did you? Yeah. That's I'm so one of the cool. few Pop, Top of the Pops presenters who is not currently in prison. <laughs> and I say currently. By the time this goes out, who knows? Um, and uh, I had the dress of me. I had the dress of me and Stuart Lee would present a couple of times. Um, we, I think we sh I think we had the same desk dressing room, but the dressing room was next door to Eternal's oh, dressing wow. room. It's and I heard room. one of Eternal having a. I could hear her weeing, but she was also practicing her song on the toilet. <laughs> so I heard the beautiful sound. Of, and I think most of Eternal's music their, could be improved their, um, by. Wee's had been Eternal. Yeah. <laughs> gone on and on and on. They could have done. So I don't know which one it was. I'm hoping it was Kelly, because that's the one I like the best. They, they always were in the same order, weren't they? Like. Anton Deck. Yeah. I think Kelly was always on that end, and the okay. one with the long hair was in the middle. The yeah. one who had the and voice. Louise Nerding, where did she stand? Are you not thinking of All Saints? No, Louise Nerding was originally an Eternal. Oh, okay. The, part of the reason no, they it, uh, got rid of Louise Nerding, I believe, is because in America they didn't like the idea of uh, black and white people being in the same group. They couldn't Honestly, cope with that in the type then? of music they had. So they had to get rid of Louise Nerding, and then she married uh, Jamie Rad Redknapp, and then became Louise Redknapp. Oh. <laughs> Not that I'm obsessed with Eternal or anything, and listen, you know, and tr trying to f track them all down and uh, have a list of ones I've heard weeing with a tick by the one. <laughs> that is not what I do. So I just, uh, d I, by accident, I heard one of Eternal Wee. <laughs> That's the only person I can think of. Who, I'm trying to think of. You, as a man, you end up standing next to people at urinals and yeah, sometimes, but as a woman, you, it's, not, it's not, as, not as often, is it? What you're nearly most famous for was appearing in the Harvey's furniture bumpers that appeared oh, yeah. during Coronation Street. I've forgotten about that. God, it got me a flat. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no regrets. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get recognised from that? Because that was going out of yeah. primetime TV. Because it was going out... It, it was. was. Part of Coronation Street. Did I? No, not... I don't know. I, I wouldn't... I've never heard of Harvey's Furniture. Did it, no, did, it, did, did they still going? They... I, I have no idea. They actually did offer us free furniture, and I don't think we <laughs> took it. A lot of... Um, is it called pleatherette? What's that? What's that? Is it called pleather? Like False fake leather. leather. Fake leather. It's a good name if it is. Is it called that? Yeah. <laughs> and you played Hattie Jakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. In yeah. Hancock. Was this the, one of the reimaginings? Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, I guess it was slightly um, off the radar. It was on BBC Four. Um, I mean, I didn't really... I hadn't really seen... They were, it's not really my thing, the carry-on films. I, hadn't, I wasn't really familiar with them. I mean, I was aware of them, sort of, in our cultural history, but... Um, yeah, it, it, I guess what was quite difficult about it, it was that everyone else was um, known as a, an impressionist already of the person they were doing. And I just sort of approximated, watched a few. I guess what was difficult as well is that she seemed to do, she seemed to have a different, I don't know, this is interesting, but she had a, uh, a different kind of way of speaking and different characters she used to speak. And so it was quite, it, like people, someone doing Sid James or Kenneth, like it's really obvious what you should do. Yeah. And I wasn't, I didn't quite have that. Um, she was quite an interesting uh, person. Yeah, in Jake. fact, my, my parents used to live next door to her dresser. Right. She's dead now. Okay. But this sweet woman was her dresser for years. And she used to come over, we, it's when we lived near the Brecon Beacons. So the neighbour would come over every Christmas and have a couple of sherries and just say, she was very unhappy. She was very unhappy. That would happen every year. Yeah. But she wouldn't go into much detail. She just kept saying she was very unhappy. She so I had that. That's all I had. Yeah. 
Was to she go married on. to John John Le Majuri? Ma yeah, he was friends with my grandfather. Right. Because okay. he was also a jazz musician. They used to hang out. Um, and I think he was quite hopeless, wasn't he? And she really had to do everything for him. Maybe I think when then she had an affair with. Yeah. Someone else, and she was quite a quite a one old hat. I, I just said the lines. I didn't worry about any of that. No. I didn't do much research. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was um, yeah, it was a different, you know, nice to do different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been doing lots of. I mean, you you because you, you started out as a, as a stand up, and you've I mean, mm. you're mainly really an, an actor now. I think it's fair to say. Is it? Would you go back to stand up? No, I think at the moment I'm just writing more. Right. And. Um, I feel like I would, re I could retire to writing. Yeah, I just so you, really love it as I get older. You've more written more. books of monologues for. Yeah, I've written some books. I'm trying to write a new book at the moment. It's in development, and uh, it might happen, which would be exciting. It's sort of a memoir, okay, um, but with some specific kind of themes. So if that happened, I guess that would be a good, yeah, six, eight months writing that. Yeah. I'd love to write it. I hope it happens. Um, yeah, I write quite a lot for, for radio and uh, just bits and bobs. And what was the bobs idea? Because you've written a couple of books about uh, yeah. so monologues for female actors. Is that is that what they? Yeah, it was kind of like um, I, you know, the I, I always loved Alan Bennett's Talking Heads. I was always obsessed with them. I wanted to write something like that, and and uh, and it seemed yeah, like a lot of like women in particular would write to me and say, I've got an audition or I need to do something funny for this, have you got any ideas? And it just felt like there wasn't the thing that they wanted that, was at, that hadn't been heard before. Yeah. So I started writing them as a favor to friends. I was like, oh, well, I, yeah, I'll write you something, like, you know, five minutes long. That That's I think a would pretty nice you. favor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, then I, to... but it's also a good, um, like, writing exercise. Yeah. It was good, and then I ended up, I suddenly had enough that I could publish them. And yeah, it was great. It was it was a nice feeling to have a nice BN number. <laughs> it's a nice feeling. Sure. Um, and uh, you've been. I've got, I've got Dire Straits written down here, and I didn't. There was a video oh, yeah. about you and Dire Straits, and I thought I won't watch it, and I'll see what you have oh, okay. to say about Dire Straits. So it was um, you know Alan Davis's program. Oh yeah. What's it called? As yet. Called uh, as uh, it's called Richard it. Herring's Lesser <laughs> Square Theatre Podcast <laughs> with with Alan Davis. How did it come up? I hadn't. I hadn't planned to talk about it. It was something, it was really, really fun. I mean, I was so drunk by the time it came around to me. <laughs> I can tell when I watch it back, all the tells. <laughs> it's not a good idea being drunk on television. I've only done it once before when I went on Buzzcocks. That was awful. <laughs> um, sorry. Well, sometimes it can. I interrupted sometimes. myself. Um, it, uh, yeah, why did I end up telling story? I can't remember, but it was so odd because there was... Um, in my school, there was a competition, and you had to find a heart-shaped pebble. And I, I think it was something to do with, um, like, heart health, but based in Wales. So I think they had the idea of, oh, that's how we'll link it up. So I spent ages looking for this. And they said the prize was really good, but they didn't say what it was. But I think they hinted it would mean meeting a celebrity. So I found the best heart-shaped pebble, took it into school. They said, yeah, you've won. It was really exciting. <laughs> And it was lots of schools in Wales took part in the competition. So I was told to turn up at this hotel on a certain day to collect my prize. So I think my, my older brother went with me to the chaperone. I was about 11. Um, we got to this posh hotel in Cardiff and they said, right, go up to like the very top floor. So we went up and then a man sort of went, oh, congratulations, can I look at your pebble? I showed him the pebble. And he said, well, the prize is you're going to meet in, through that door is dire straits. <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant. I thought it was like a concept or like a ride. I don't know, I was confused. Yeah. I thought... You're gonna die, die yesterday. What, what? What's he saying? So I started crying because I just didn't understand. And my brother was like, "Oh, it's okay. There, it's a band," but he didn't really know. So we went into this room, and I think Mark not not is that his name? I think he was standing there. I don't really remember. I remember. I just remember a tall man with like slightly grey hair yep. and quite a big nose. And he said, oh, hello, can I look at your pebble? <laughs> and I showed him, and he said, do you want an autograph? And I said, no. <laughs> and then we went. 
so weird, but I asked, and then and then there was a rumor that it was going to be Kylie and that she dropped out. Yeah, it was even sadder. Well, that would make more sense for a school. I know it's sad, but I'm sure that happened. Some eleven-year-old school kids meeting <laughs> a middle-aged rockers band. <laughs> it sounds so suspicious. <laughs> I asked my mum about it the other day and she was like, I remember the, the pebble bit. Yeah. But then she, and I said, oh yeah, but you, you didn't come with us to the hotel room. Why not? I was 11. <laughs> and she got, yeah. So they work in show business. You can trust them. They'll be fine. This, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? With a middle-aged man asking to see your pebble. I mean, <laughs> I like to think he then wrote a whole song about me. <laughs> that didn't happen. Yeah, heart-shaped pebble. So poetic. Well done for finding the best uh, heart-shaped pebble. Well, there's some good beaches in Wales. Yes. You know, with determination, you can do it. (laughs) (laughs) Have you still got the pebble or did you have to give it in? No, sorry. Okay. No, I can't. (laughs) <laughs> so you, you were in uh, the sitcom Not Going Out for, mm. a, good, for a good for while. A, yeah, man and boy, yeah. <laughs> a long time. So was that your first big, biggish break? Or you... Yeah, my first ever TV job was 28 Acts and 28 Minutes oh, was it? on BBC yeah. Three. Yeah. Do you remember that? Were I did you, the radio. I wasn't allowed on the oh, TV because okay. I'm not allowed on TV anymore. But I did, <laughs> yeah, the ra- I forgot. I did the radio version. I forgot that. So you do a minute's worth of yeah. material. Yeah. It's a lovely job to get. It's quite hard, though, right? Yeah. And then my second ever job was, was extras, which was terrifying for, like, your first time on a set. That was quite scary. Um, and then, yeah, not long after that, not going out. Yeah, I was quite young when I, when I got it. Um, yeah, it was, it was an amazing... Lee is so... Um, he's so generous with his gags. It's so refreshing. <laughs> Yeah, it was, you know, it's been amazing because that sitcom was did a quite a few series and then they were going to take it off and then, it yeah, got and then it, put back on by popular demand mm, and and it's still going. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, no, he's he is he's so lovely. Like he he genuinely gets joy from watching you know other people get a laugh and gives away some of his best stuff. It's so nice. Like I'm so I've definitely worked with comics who you know, hate, they can't bear it. They cannot bear it. If someone else gets a laugh, there's like, it's like they're going to, you know, it's like they're facing their own extinction. They can't bear it. (laughs) Um, But that's what's so, yeah, lovely about him. But it wouldn't, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, especially in an ensemble thing, it would be Mm. weird to to want to have, I mean, I guess it does happen. But he doesn't, like, keep the best lines for himself or anything like that, you know. He seems like a nice man, Lee. I know him quite well. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's you lovely. did another. You did a play with him. Oh yeah, yeah. That was interesting. Um, I can't. I can't talk about it freely because I'd have to say how I felt about it. <laughs> so I can't say anything about it. I imagine you really enjoyed it then. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it's I'm picking up from this. It? Because I'm friends with so many of the people that I know, it, it was fine. <laughs> I think they put that it on the poster. It was what it was. <laughs> it was an experience. Um, good. Well, we won't talk about that. That's okay. Um, I'll ask you. Uh, I'll, I can't ask you some Christmas emergency questions. That would be insane. It's January now. We're well into January. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't time fly? It does. I'll ask you yourself. some regular. I mean, there are some regular. Oh, these, questions. these make me nervous. Um, you should be nervous. If you had to marry a piece of furniture, oh. if you had to, which piece of furniture would you marry? I've given you that especially because of the, your love of furniture. Oh right. Already, it wasn't. It just came up. I think an armoire sounds romantic. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Or a footstool. <laughs> It'd be good to marry a footstool. I mean, you know, they, that's a useful thing well, to... Well, they're so handy, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. But would it mind you sitting on a chair? You'd have to have a chair to have a footstool. The, uh, the footstool might be jealous. You mean, would chair. it be jealous? Yeah. Because, to be fair, the chair's getting the, the, the good bits, Does isn't it? Does it have emotions? Unless I the footstool is was... a pervert and likes feet. And anyone who likes feet is a pervert. Oh, I thought it was and like... And I know that's um... most of you. I thought it was like people that fall in love with objects. Is it called a rotomania? Like the yeah. woman that married the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, there's... there's yeah. <clears throat> I assumed, I didn't think it was sentient. Does it have emotions? Well, who knows? Door? I mean, I would imagine you think it does. If you, you, the other one is married a piece of furniture, be, don't throw someone, this back at me. <clears throat> someone would have to kick it down the aisle when we got married. <laughs> like, how would it go down the aisle? Or drag it on a piece of string. <laughs> the vicar it's would, on wheels. <laughs> the vicar could have it on wheels. Yeah. I imagine they put the footstool just at the well, altar ready little, for you. You know, little suit for the wedding. 
could do. You come up the aisle, you're the bride, so the footstool's just waiting yes, at the right. altar. It's yeah. a good place there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Unless With it's a female it. footstool and oh, you, yeah. you're, yeah, sure. you're the groom female. Mm. Or, or sexless. Everything's allowed now. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's allowed. That's... Um, no, I say that. Uh, would you rather be allergic to wood or not? <laughs> wood the material? Yeah. Or wood, not the word wood? Wood, you know, like wood. <clears throat> um, the choices are you're allergic to wood or you're I, not allergic what? to wood. Which would you prefer? Can I choose the, the symptoms? What happens? Well, you'd be allergic to, you'd get hives, I imagine, probably sweat, it'd be, it'd be awful. I mean, I would, I think it's quite an obvious choice, but I'm glad you... <laughs> I, would, I mean, you might not I, be able to breathe, and there's wood no, everywhere. If, if it, I mean, it would be just, very inconvenient to be allergic if to wood. the reaction was very mild, yeah. and I got, like, a whole Edinburgh show out of it. And <laughs> okay. A whole, you know, well, that's interesting. As a comedian, you sort of do blah, think, blah, blah, blah. where I, could this lead? But I think all things considered, Yes, though. OK. <laughs> not. 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 You're the first person I've asked that question, and possibly okay. the last. <laughs> Sorry. Poss- no, it's not it your really fault. It's uh, very much the fault is it within the In question. In the writing. Very much writing. within being the four four hundredth question I was writing in a book of five hundred. It's my mascara run yet. Okay, here's one. Would you rather be able to turn your head like an owl, or have a neck that telescopes up to the length of a giraffe's neck, but can go back to normal neck length at will? Um. A head that turns like an owl, or a neck that telescopes up into the length of a giraffe. I mean, that sounds more interesting, doesn't it? I'm trying to think of an advantage where I would have to move my head, but not my body with it. Um. I would choose the owl, actually. Yeah. Over the giraffe. It's 360 degree vision, basically. I but, think that'd know, be a laugh. With the giraffe, you can <laughs> see over stuff. Yeah, but I'm trying to think the last time I, I mean, I'm quite tall. I'm trying to think the last time I was in a situation where I thought, I wish I could see a bit higher. Yeah. I can't think of one. When you're behind something? <laughs> no. Just the first thing that springs to mind for me. Like, um, what, do you like watching... You could go to football matches and just Not watch. for me. Okay. You could go to... No. Nah. To see Go a to tennis matches and watch... Ten- I can't, I don't think... You I could go... That. You can't go to a play because the, the plays are in theatres and you... I suppose you could put your head... I but like, if you put to... your head like your giraffe head, you were outside the theatre and put your giraffe head into the theatre. If I was But then the theatre people um... go, get your head out of here, you haven't got a ticket. Over the brow of a hill... Yeah, over, if you're trying to go over Brow of a Hill, if you're in Pont de Prith yeah. and you need to look over some of the wooden bridges that aren't there I'd go anymore. with the owl because I'm quite paranoid. <laughs> you're worried people are talking about you behind It'd you. It'd be nice to be able to see yeah. what's happening all yeah. around. Do you, do, you imagine, do you imagine people My are talking... My final talk, answer, uh, Chris, <laughs> is you, owl. You imagine people, when they're right behind you, are doing awful things. Is that what you think? Because, like, it's not likely... If people are going to talk about you, they'll wait till you're out of the room. They're not going to get away. It's all right. We're behind her. I, I think she's got human vision. Talking about my weird owl. And she probably, neck. probably can't hear us because she's looking the other way. Let's talk about Kate. No. Okay. Fair enough. No, it was a stupid question. In a way, those were, I feel silly asking those questions. In a way, you've, you've destroyed the whole ethos. <laughs> <laughs> this. I'll ask you. I'll ask you this. We'll go for. We'll go for some of my exciting new uh, emergency questions. Uh, th- what's the worst swap you have ever made? Um, I feel like I've swapped my dignity for money uh, sometimes. <laughs> yes. You know you don't get so paid that. for this. <laughs> <laughs> that. Okay, that's good. Um, why do you think everyone stopped wearing hats? I don't think they have. They, well, not, I mean, oh, not mean everyone has, but in the old formal. days, everyone used to wear hats, and now hardly anyone wears hats. Do you have a theory about why that um, might be? I think maybe... Uh, I don't know, maybe after the, the war ended, <laughs> and things lightened up, <laughs> less formal. It's a good theory. Thanks. I think it's um, because of getting in and out of cars. <laughs> you but people, hat they off, were you? still wearing hats when cars were no, no, but then, you know, Then they thought it's inconvenient, you've got to take your hat off all the time. So, and then someone thought, why not not wear a hat? Maybe it's to do with church. It was always seen as a, yeah. 
you know, quite a lot. Yeah, because you had to take your hat off in church, yeah. and then people stopped going to church. Thought mm. well, I don't need a hat to take yeah. off anymore, Maybe so I'll just do with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if I ever if I ever meet a ghost, I'll ask. Okay. Have you ever seen a ghost? <laughs> is that that's one of the questions. It isn't is. It? It's an old school one. Well, obviously not, because I don't think they exist, but I want them to exist. Yeah. I love ghost stories. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have. And if I, if I, even if I have, I wouldn't say I had. Wouldn't you? No. So you might have. Yeah, I might have. Yeah, done that. that makes me think you have. Well, I think I've seen things, but I think yeah. I was very tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I think how it works, doesn't it? It's the, it's the uh, you know. It's... The veil is thinner. Well, you're basically. tired. The light's weird. So you catch something out of the corner it's, of your eye. It's weird how how people don't claim to have seen like Neanderthal ghosts or cavemen ghosts. Like, when did souls begin? Like. The big That's not a ghost, not though, a is ghost, it? Mate, that's a real thing. The, the Sasquatch. At least fucking think before you shout out Bigfoot. <laughs> but think, when we, um, think, is a Bigfoot a ghost? No. You know, like, when, when there was first it's life... It's a real thing. <laughs> a live thing. A ghost can't walk through a forest and go... <laughs> I hope not. I'd be terrified. My, my, I apologise for it's my It's hard to know when, when, we, when ghosts are supposed to begin, like when we first crawled out of the primordial soup. When, yes. when, did, when did the first soul happen? Yeah, well, you know, it's, that is a, a very big philosophical question. Yeah. I'm not sure that this podcast is it's equipped the right to place, discuss. It's the right forum. But I'm going to have a fucking go. Yeah. I think when God... When were souls God invented? In, when God a invented concept. us and uh, we ate from the Garden of Eden <laughs> apple tree... <laughs> Right. In so 6, Adam and Eve's BC. ghosts somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm asking you, like, you. Yeah, I think like, they probably are. Why has no one ever seen them walking around with an apple and no clothes on? <laughs> no one's ever claimed to have seen Adam or Eve's ghost. No. I don't think Exciting. everyone becomes a ghost. That would be confusing. I think it's just uh, restless spirits. Okay. You know, we might be ghosts now. We might be. Have you not thought about that? We might be ghosts and um, we think we're alive and all of us are dead. Except one bloke in here who's going. I think, ah! I, <laughs> I think I'm too narcissistic to think yeah. I'm a ghost. Okay. What is the strangest <laughs> thing you've ever found in the embers of a bonfire? Oh, um, oh. <clears throat> some <laughs> bunting. Some bunting. Yeah. Like flags and stuff. Yeah. In a bonfire. Yeah. How did it get there? Do you know? Don't know. Oh. I just Which remember seeing the it? coloured triangles half burnt. Oh, someone was burning bunting. Um. Yeah, I don't know, like a WI that went wrong or something. <laughs> Interestingly, the word bunting, do you know where it comes from? I don't. Is it Emma Bunting? No. <laughs> I, w- I wish. There used to be huge, um, like, slag piles, like, on the Euston Road, like, in the 1850s. <laughs> and women used to sift through them looking for things to sell, like scraps of material and, you know, old chicken butter. And they were called bunters. Right. And that's where the word comes from. Thank you. Thank That's my that. audition for QI. Thank you for that piece of information. <laughs> well, it's true. In the, How you know, did you it find that out? And, well, honestly, because, well, the book, um, you know, Peter Ackroyd's book. Oh, the London book. The London book. Oh, that is a great yes. book. That is a very good book. Re- read that book. That is a good book. Don't read it's Richard Osman's book. Um, <laughs> has he got just, a book out? He's, Richard Osman's got a book out. It's rubbish. What's it about? It's nothing. It's just him writing loads of Is it called shit. Pointless? It's, it's, not, it's not like this. Not a proper thing like this. <laughs> what are you, what's Not proper. This? Oh, Christmas, it's a Christmas Christmas version. emergency. Isn't that Christmas That's very emergency. savvy of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most important thing you've ever unplugged to charge your phone? That's nice, isn't That's it? Richard, great... Richard Osman, I slag him off. I was only joking. Then I'd take his question. That's a really great question. Thank you, yeah. It's Richard Osman's question. He's amazing. <laughs> He's a genius and his book is amazing. I mean, you won't want to read it now in January, but it's, uh, it's, it'll be great for next Christmas. If you wait a bit, it's probably get be, uh, be discounted. The sort of joke answer would be like a life support machine. It would, that's, it, what, that's what Richard Osman said. Yeah. Um, I would say someone else's iPhone, it was really irate. <laughs> It's an odd thing, isn't it? I think that, that, uh, it's an odd etiquette. Well, it is. There's an odd etiquette of uh, iPhone use. and not, You're wor- worried about... You. When I was in Edinburgh this year, my phone was always running out and I bought a plug to put in the dressing room of the Pleasants. Yes. And I thought, should I leave this out and so anyone can use it? Yeah. But if I do that, someone will steal it. So I didn't leave it out. I hid oh. it in the dressing room. 
But I felt really bad for hiding it in the dressing that room. That says quite a lot about your worldview. Well, I just knew someone would nick it. Definitely. I would think, on this is... I wouldn't have assumed... You by mistake, maybe. No, no, no. Just they'd go, I'll have that. And did it happen? No, you didn't buy it. I know, I bought it and I hid it in the cupboard. And they never found it. Still got it, I can show it you if you like. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so good to me. Yeah. Um, I'm at the point, I've got like a bootleg one and it's about getting it at the right angle. Okay. Now, and it will work at sort of 45 degrees, yeah. it will charge. It's quite exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm 50, it's, so that reminds me of... Uh... Of, of what? <laughs> okay. Did you know that dairy milk was going to be called Highland Milk? Dairy milk chocolate is going to be Highland Milk chocolate. How did you find that out? I um, read, read Rich Osmond's book. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very good. Island milk. What, if you had to have a chocolate bar inserted in your anus, oh, right, if you yeah. had to, which chocolate bar would you choose? Maybe a chomp. Chomp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that feels right. Yeah. Now I've said it, yeah. It feels right. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. Well, you've got lots of stuff coming up. You've got <laughs> terrific. Terrific is a terrific answer. And also, I don't, there's a better word to say, I don't there's a better word to say in a Welsh accent than a chomp. I have to say. I don't have, a, I don't have one. You did just, when you said a chomp, it came out Welsh. It was Let's lovely. Let's be honest, though, I don't. It was, if you put a chomp up your anus, it will come out Welsh. And that is, <laughs> that is my, that's my rich tearing guarantee. So you've got, you're doing loads of, like, proper acting. You're in decline and fall. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that was, yeah, that was great. Yeah, have you ever read it? You seem like you would have done. I think I might have read it. You must have. Oh, well, you know, it's hard work, isn't it, reading? Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather watch the TV <laughs> show. <laughs> no, it's been and gone. That yeah. was like, it was on, I don't know, a year and a bit. Oh, was yeah, it? It was, yeah, it was very classy. It was, it was lovely. Me and Gemma Whelan, you know her? I do, she's Playing in everything. Sisters. She's yeah. Yeah, no, it, it was proper acting. You're right, it was good. Have you got any, have you got more stuff like that coming up? Well, I've just, um... Finished filming. Do you know uh, Jamie Dimitriou? Yes, and I do. Yeah. So he's just. I've just filmed his series for E4, um, and it's 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 amazing. It's really there's something really special about it. I think it's going to be really funny. So they're just editing it at the moment. It's called Staff, and it's because uh, that's the name of his. He plays this like a Greek Greek London sort of letting agent. It's oh, all yes, based yeah. in the letting agents. It's very sort of influenced by The Office. It's all very uber naturalistic. It's very funny, I think. I think I saw it. Well, I've a seen him do that character. Black, I don't know if yeah, it's a little black. It was a yeah. black, yeah, yeah. So him and his sister Tash to meet. And they're, they're both so hilarious. Um, and and one, uh, yeah, like Dustin from Seven Dustin is in it. Tom Sturton. I don't know if these are just syllables. <laughs> they don't know what I mean. That I've just finished that like last week. That I think it's yeah, it's really funny. Cool. It's difficult these days because things are like there's so many stuff. There's so much stuff coming out in mm. a way in all different media. It's hard yeah. for something to shine through, isn't yeah, it? And things oh, no, things totally. have to like, work straight away as well, don't you've they? You've talked about this before, but yeah, when Anna and I had our series, it's I suppose gone are the days where you say, "Well, I've got my own show now, so everything will change." Yeah. It just doesn't work like that anymore. It's sort of this weird negotiation of, oh, well, I think it's done okay. Uh, let's see how many people watched. It's, it doesn't end there. Or it, it feels like, yeah, like that used to feel like that was, you could relax and you go, oh, well, that's that then. Yeah. We've kind of made it. And um, yeah, it's quite hard to make an impact now, isn't it? When there's so much, so many new TV programs. Well, it is. And they always, and of course, people are always looking for the new thing mm. as well and going for the, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, and, and it's sort of hard to get um, scripted stuff on TV as well, I think. Yeah. I mean, people always talk, don't they, about like the first series of Blackadder not being, you know, yeah, yeah. it got better, it found yeah. its feet. And I watched like the, um, when I was trying to write a script and I watched like the pilot of Ab Fab the other day and it was brilliant but it was like the first scene was like 15 minutes long <laughs> of just sort of characters talking and you wouldn't be allowed to do that now someone would like get a big red pen out and go no every scene's three minutes long and every and it moves the plot along what are yeah. you doing um so yeah I felt quite nostalgic about about that yeah yeah so are you, you're right are you writing scripts as well as books you... yeah I I've got um a couple of scripts in development, you know what it's like. Um, yeah, and I, you just sort of keep going. I, I think it's, I, well, I think sitcoms especially hard. All yeah. the kind of structural rules I found quite difficult. Sure, sure. It's all the, the dull maths bit, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so you're not gonna you're not gonna go back to Edinburgh. You're not gonna do. Oh, well, they always visit. Yeah. But I, I've just I've just started doing live stuff again, which is really Great. lovely. And I'm enjoying it because it doesn't feel like the pressure of oh god, it's yeah. gonna go well. It just feels like it's something to do. Well, because you did all these characters with uh, Anna as mm, well. Yeah. So there's, there's all this wealth of stuff there. Yeah, totally. So yeah, it's nice to be doing. The... So yeah, I did the last Edinburgh just gone. I went up and did a couple of like sketch nights. Right. And it was great. It just and I sort of forget because because I'm friends with all these sort of younger ones now in their like mid twenties, who are all you know brilliantly talented and <clears throat> the ones coming up. I forget like backstage at a gig, you know, I they're all I sort of think what's wrong with you all? Because I forget <laughs> like and there's they seem really intense more than we were. We were just like well we'd be doing this anyway even if we don't make a career out of it. It's for fun and not all of them but a lot of them you know have career plans. Yeah. more than I do like really um, I don't know if it's like the economic factor as well of feeling like you know I think it is a little bit I think you know yeah. when you know and I go back a lot further than you but uh, you know it, it was something people were doing for fun and to have a yeah. fun time and you can't afford to do that anymore you can't you know yeah, I would just yeah, go to exactly. Edinburgh to get drunk really and the show yeah, was yeah, like we a were little always drunk. that was a little inconvenience <laughs> having to do a show yeah. in the, what, for an hour a day but now it's like you know, they're, they're so knowledgeable about, yeah. like, the, the, how it works as a, an industry. And they you know, hear them, like, analysing and giving each other notes after the show. Like, you did this, we've got to do that, and that person's in, and we've got... Yeah. I just thought we were... Yeah, we were always just like... What a load of pricks. I hate, yeah. I hate, I hate young people, these bloody millennials <laughs> coming here. Pricks. Trying to do Trying to do stuff well. Yeah. I'm uh, just making up a load of shit. Bloody hell. <laughs> Maybe quite cross. Go. We're gonna have to. We're end. gonna have to stop. But I'll ask. I'll take a random emergency question. Or should I do an unrandom one? No, I'll the do pressure's a on one. for like a big ending. It's got to be. <laughs> you've got the answer to this. A. The question's got to be good. That's a lot of pressure on me. Okay. B. It's. Um, it's fifty percent you. B. It's more than fifty percent me. Okay. Um, what is the worst Adam Sandler oh, film? I hate it. <laughs> I hate this question. You must. Do you know what? Uh, I don't know if I've seen one. Oh. Is that weird? No, it's That's not what weird. I mean it's, about... it's it shows a uh, it shows a commitment to living a good life. I've Thank seen you. I've seen all of them. But I've heard you talk about the cobbler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the cobbler is worth having a and look I'm at. I'm so intrigued. There's yeah. a new one Maybe out tomorrow. that's quite good. It's got Dustin Hoffman in it, and it's apparently quite good. I can't bear to watch it. What's it called? Oh, it's something like the oh, brothers the, carry yeah, a mushroom. The mine bunch. off or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I've seen a bit of Punch Drunk Love. Yeah, that's too good. You can't, you can't come in with that. That's the best Adam uh, Sandler film. Wasn't that the question? No, what's the worst the Adam Sandler film? Oh, okay. What's the worst Adam Sandler film? The, the, the Cobbler, that's what you'd want me yeah, to say. Yeah, that's what I'm very happy. I think Jack and Jill probably might just okay. about uh, take it, but we'll had the see. Pleasure. Um, would you work with Adam Sandler if you got the chance? Oh, yeah, it'd be fascinating, yeah. wouldn't it? Like, he seems clinically fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think. Good. Well, I hope you do. I hope that is the most I can hope for any actor <laughs> and comedian who get to work with Adam Sandler. The cobbler Sandler. too. The cobbler. The cobbler too. Oh. You could be the cobbler's daughter. Oh wow! And you could Such then an have the because Adam Sandler would like that because he'd be in that even less, but he would still get I'm gonna, paid. I'm going to tweet him when I get in. Okay. And I'll, ask. I'll tweet him. I hope he listens to the podcast. Um, he might. He's do. welcome to come on any time he wants. I would absolutely <laughs> love to talk to Adam Sandler. I feel he might not be that interested. Why don't, uh, I've broken why don't my, you start? Oh, broken my book. I'm so sorry. A cobbler uh, podcast, and then he might hear about it and yeah. turn up. I might just go to his house, stand outside. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Brand knows him. I'll get Russell Brand to give oh, me his number, and I'll okay. ring him up. Okay. How about that? Yeah, Who it. would you prefer I have on, Trevor and Simon or Adam Sandler? <laughs> Cheer for Trevor and Simon now. <laughs> Cheer for Adam Sandler now. <laughs> Trevor and si it's Trevor and Simon. The people have decided in the World Cup of... Who at what? Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, OK. Come on, Adam Sandler. No, at Trevor and Simon. You're, being, you're doing that deliberately. Come it's quite on. fun. It's a funny callback to about a month ago. So congratulations. Um... It's been lovely to talk to you, Katie. I hope well, you enjoyed the you. show. Thank you very much. <laughs> Katie Wicks! Thank you. We've got two more next week. I think there are some more tickets. Dave Gorman, Paul Chowdhury. Should be fun.
How do you like them Sky potatoes? <laughs> 